Are the headaches you're experiencing being caused from your scoliosis? When patients come in complaining regarding the symptoms involved with scoliosis, one of the most common things people complain about is headaches, especially in the adult patient. In kids with scoliosis, we tend not to feel or see many symptoms associated with scoliosis, but when you move into a young adult stage, middle age, or even late stage or adult stage, we definitely see symptoms, and headaches tend to be a very common one. And the reason why is because the role of your spine is very has a very high facilitation for your nerve system and the way your body functions. A healthy spine really helps with posture, mobility, it facilitates movement, but one of the most important functions is protection. It actually protects your spinal cord and it protects the nerves that come out that supply all your organs and systems of your body. So having a normally or well aligned spine can help affect or help protect these the nerves to actually control these organs. So when a spine has its normal position, meaning it's straight from the front and it has a, the, the normal curvatures from the side, meaning the, the side curve from the neck to the mid-back to the low back, this helps deal with movement and it also helps absorb gravity over time. And this, this, this dynamic ability to deal with gravity and movement, the, the combination, the way the spine is designed is very impressive, meaning it has a great resistance to forces and has the great ability to move. So it's a very impressive design in terms of the way it functions and it protects. However, when scoliosis happens, it tends to affect this alignment and not only will affect where people think they have like a thoracic scoliosis or a lumbar scoliosis, it affects the entire spine, meaning it's going to affect the, if you have a lumbar curve, it's affecting your thoracic and cervical spine. And if you have a thoracic curve, it's affecting the thoracic, cervical and lumbar spine. There's no way it can be isolated in one area, even though if you, that's what you're told you have, that's the most severe curve you have. And the problem is when you start affecting the, this view or the scoliosis view, you're also affecting the side view, those normal curves I talked about from the neck to the mid-back to the low-back, the lordosis, the kyphosis, and the lordosis and the lumbar spine. And when we lose these curves is when it can lead to lots of other symptoms as well, one of them being headaches. Now, this is very different for every single patient depending on the severity of the case, but we definitely know the more severe your scoliosis is, the more it's going to affect the other planes, meaning the side view as well and this is going to have a greater effect on the way your body's functioning. Now once you start affecting the spine you have the ability to affect the central nervous system. The central nerve system meaning the spinal cord and nerves. When you start affecting this you can affect all symptoms of the body and you can have very widespread effects. So scoliosis can be very multifactorial meaning causing lots of different things that are happening in your body to occur. And the most common form of headaches tend to be either a tension headache or a pressure headache. Now, scoliosis can definitely affect both of these types of headaches. And the way it does that is that since it's affecting the thoracic spine, lumbar spine, and cervical spine, meaning once the spine shifts, it affects the entire spine, even the side view, it starts affecting these abnormal curves. And these abnormal curves will cause muscles to dif fire different, or cause the nerve system to fire different. And this increase in workload in the, in the areas, in these areas can lead to headaches, something called like a tension headache. Scoliosis can also affect, when it affects the alignment, it also affects something called cerebral spinal fluid or CSF. The cerebral spinal fluid is a clear liquid that's inside the spinal cord itself and it's helping nourish the brain and the spinal cord. And it acts like not only as a cushion but also a nourishing, a nourishing system for these two organs, your brain and your spinal cord. And it's actually flowing from your spine into your brain and back and forth. When the spine's out of its normal alignment, it can affect the way the cerebral spinal fluid flows, which can also lead to pressure headaches. One other type of headache that I, I know very familiar is something called migraines. I suffered from migraines for many years. And a migraine is very different than a headache, meaning in terms of severity. They tend to be more severe, they tend to last for a longer period of, period of time, and they tend to have more of a neurological effect, meaning they're affecting vision, kind of aura, it can affect hearing, get to be very light sensitive. So, and because of the severity, they can be very debilitating. Scoliosis can definitely cause headaches and migraines. And the way it can affect migraines is because it can affect the blood flow. Like I mentioned, once you lose the normal alignment of the spine, we know we can affect the way the cerebral spinal fluid functions. But you also have arteries that go up into your brain that go through your neck. And these arteries are also can be affected when the spine shifts out of alignment. It can unfortunately decrease the flow of these arteries and decrease vascular supply to the brain. And one thing that we do know is migraines can be triggered 
triggered when there's a lack of blood flow to the brain can trigger migraines. And that's why when you start improving people's uh, spinal position, you can not only affect, you know, pressure headaches, you can affect tension headaches, but you can also affect migraines. And that's exactly why I became a chiropractor because I had my cervical spine corrected as a result of it. The issue is mine was being caused not from scoliosis. I only had a cervical spine problem. But if you actually have scoliosis and you start shifting the spine this way, which is causing an effect of your scoliosis or of your cervical spine, you can get your neck treated and not have the much improvement as you would like because the scoliosis is still sitting here. So correcting the scoliosis and reducing the curve can actually help you get better reduction or improvement in the cervical spine, which can help you with those three types of headaches that I mentioned. So if you're experiencing headaches and you have scoliosis and you're not getting the results that you need, you may have to look at actually trying to reduce your scoliosis so your body can actually function better and we can affect the entire spine positively so you can start getting relief or improvement from the headaches or migraines that you could be having as a result of the curves. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.